Good morning, everybody. It's Miss Scott. Uh, we're going to take a look at some science language arts essays. And the first one we're going to look at, I want you to think about quotes and how you use quotation marks. And as we go through, we're going to find some other things too. But those are your main focus. Um, it'll take a minute to get there, but you'll see what I mean. All right, here we are. Um, first of all, look at the first paragraph of this essay. And before I even begin to read, I'm going to tell you that it looks a little short to me. And if I glance through looking for periods, I see that there's one here and one here, meaning this introduction paragraph is only two sentences long. And I think everybody in the room knows that you need to have at least five sentences to be considered a paragraph. Now, one thing I will see in this writer's defense, if you look at the first sentence, it's really long. And that can sometimes be an indication that there's a lot of details crammed into one sentence that needs to be split up. So let's go ahead and take up the first line. When I was a young little pebble, my family and I lived on the coast of the Negros Island. There's the first sentence. That's one complete idea. I'm a little pebble living on the Negros Island. So this should really be a period and this should be a capital letter. Let's talk about this first sentence a little bit. There was a pause in there if you listened. And I'm going to go ahead and read it through once and we'll see if you can recognize the pause. When I was a young little pebble, my family and I lived on the coast of the Negros Island. So did you see where it was? That's right, after pebble and before my. Yesterday we talked about um, using unnecessary words and I think I feel that way about young and little. Young and little are kind of the same thing. Since we're talking about a pebble, uh, let's go ahead and go with the word little. So I'm just going to cross young out and we'll leave it like that. When I was a little pebble, my family and I lived on the coast of the Negros Island. And I feel like while we're here, I should point out that this writer did a really good job with capital letters. Both the N in Negros and the I in Island are capitalized just as they need to be because that's a proper name for the island. Okay, second sentence. Until one sad, sad day, some kid picked me up and skipped me into the Sulu Sea. All right, again, writer, I think you've had a little overkill on the sad, so we're going to cross one out because one sad gets the point across. Until one sad day, some kid picked me up and skipped me into the Sulu Sea. Did everyone hear the pause in the first part? It comes right after the word sad day. All right, the sentence is good. I sank to the bottom of the sea and there my journey began. Very good. One thing though, after there, there is no need for a comma. There my journey began. It's all one statement, one idea, no pause, no rest, all connected. Paragraph number two. This one's looking better. I'm going to go ahead and switch colors. And if you look, this is a nice meaty paragraph. Hopefully it all makes good sense and um, we've got enough information here. I'm not going to count periods. I'm just going to read it this time. As I was sitting at the bottom of the sea, comma, very good, all of a sudden I began to move. I thought to myself, oh my rock. I'm in a deep sea trench of an oceanic, oceanic subducting boundary. Come on, Billy, swim, swim. <laughs> Cute. I have to point out, good job with the quote opening quote. It is outside of the words, and it also begins with a beautiful capital letter because it is a new sentence. It's the sentence that the rock said, so it needs a capital. It's got a comma before it, which is fine. It's exactly how it should be, leading into the exact quote. Um, one thing, though, oceanic, oceanic subducting boundary, unless you're going to name a specific one, you don't need capital letters here. Um, because it's a term, it's not a name, so those should be lowercase. Um, everything else looks fine. Here's the end of the quote, and notice that the punctuation, punctuation that ends the quotation sentence 
is inside of the quotation marks. And that is exactly as it should be. Sometimes students will move the exclamation point or the end punctuation outside of the quotation mark, and that is incorrect. So, moving along. But then I remembered rocks aren't the greatest swimmers. The slap pole wasn't stopping for anyone. Right as I thought it, it was all over, right as I thought it was all over, it was just the beginning. That is an awkward sentence. I had to stop and read this part especially twice, trying to figure out what exactly this writer's trying to say. Um, I think I would make some changes in there. And just to give them a clue, I'm going to put a question mark like, I don't understand what this is about because I really don't. I looked down at myself and I was turning into a gooey substance. Fine there. Then, oh, I started turning into magma. All right, dot, dot, dot. You still need a space after the last one. And magma is not a proper name. Again, like oceanic, oceanic subducting boundary, this is a term. So this M should be lowercase. I saw the beach right in front of me, but then I started going right under it, and convection currents carried me away like a conveyor belt. Kudos. Let me change color for this one. Right here, like a conveyor belt. This, you guys, if you missed it or forgot, is a simile. It's used as a detail to describe something and it does a great job of describing how convection currents carry. So I really like that. I'm going to put a star by it. Well done. And I do want to point out that conveyor is spelled O-R, not E-R. So conveyor belt. I closed my eyes, and when I opened them, I was inside a volcano. Now, volcano, very much like magma and subducting zone boundary. I'm not going to say it again is a term, not a name. So volcano needs to be lowercase, not capital. I'm going to come back to the second paragraph and I'm going to give that one to you guys. And when I talk a little bit about the quotes that are in it, I'm going to have you rewrite it. So stay tuned. Back again, everybody. Take a look at this yellow screen. Um, I'm showing you this. This is actually an excerpt of a book. It's called If I Stay by Gail Foreman but more about that another day. Um, I took this excerpt out because it shows a conversation between characters. And I'm gonna use some of the things on my desktop here to point out how this works. Um, in the first paragraph, the narrator is speaking, but um, the only person who is quoted is the mom. No one else speaks but the mom until you get right here. And I want you to notice what the writer does when a new speaker comes into the scene. So I'm just going to read the first paragraph to you. It says, I can tell dad is happy. Barely an inch of snow means that if I make breakfast, dad and I guffaw at the same time. Mom makes cereal and toast. Dad's the cook in the family. Pretending not to hear us, she reaches into the cabinet for a box of Bisquick. Please, how hard can it be? Who wants pancakes? I do, I do, Teddy yells. Can we have chocolate chips in them? So, as soon as Teddy pipes in, the author does this. They enter and start a new line. They put new quotes. And you've got a new speaker. This space... And you can also do this with, with an indent instead. Like if you're only single spacing, you could indent the text. But in this book or this example, they put a blank line which serves the same purpose. This lets the reader know that someone new is talking. Uh, next one, I don't see why not, mom replies. Again, mom's words are inside of quotes. The comma is inside of the quotation mark. And mom replies, belongs outside. Um, can I talk about mom for a minute? Because this is a capital that sometimes people forget. Um, if you're talking about your own mom and you're not saying my mom, then it needs to be capital because for you, that's her proper name. Um, I've paired up some sentences. The first one, 
first two actually about are about a girl named Felicia. Um, the first thing is uh, Felicia says she is the best player. Um, she believes this about herself, but these are not her exact words. Um, look at the second example. Felicia says, I am the best player. In this instance, you do have some exact, exact words of Felicia. And what Felicia said, I am the best player. The period is part of her sentence. Um, it will need quotation marks around it because these are her exact words. So I'm going to go ahead and add them there. This is already capital because it's I. And I, when you speak of yourself, should always be capital. I remember this by saying, I am important. I deserve capitalization. <laughs> so I'll put the capital on the I. Uh, when, before you introduce a quote, you always put a comma. And that is outside the quote marks. All right, let's look at the next, next sample. This sentence reads, Don't wear those dirty socks to bed, said Mom, or you will get the sheets dirty. First look through here and find Mom's words. There they are. Those are her exact words. Said mom. It's just to tell you it's a quote. So we put quotes in front. We put quotes at the end here and a comma because it's not the end of her sentence. We leave said mom as it is. We put more quotes for the second part and more quotes outside the exclamation point. Let me give you a big warning. Some students are mistakenly putting this on the outside. That is incorrect. Her words in this example are all together. We need a comma after said. <clears throat> Some quotes in front of the D for don't. Some quotes outside the exclamation point. And one more thing. Can you see what it is? It's a capital. Mom's sentence, don't, is the first word of her quote. So it needs to be a capital D. Yes, I'm aware it's not the beginning of this sentence, but since it is her quote, her words, her sentence, Inside those quotation marks, it needs to be capitalized because that's the first word of her words. I know that's confusing, but that's the rule. Okay, so last stop today, let's come back to the essay about Billy the Rock. Uh, you and I together have already gone through the first two paragraphs and made changes there. But we're going to focus in right here on this paragraph that I have highlighted blue. It's the third one in the essay. And I'm just going to jump that out a little bit for you so that it's bigger. And I'm going to press pause on the video and have you copy this paragraph. When you copy it down, I want you to make all the necessary corrections you can find, whether it's capitalization or whether it's quotation marks, uh, maybe even looking at a dialogue because two rocks are going to talk to each other. So best of luck and thank you for participating today.